Our world is rife with mysteries and enigmas. Through the years, a myriad of wondrous events have occurred and thousands of amazing discoveries have been made. We can never be quite sure what lies beyond the horizon. Between archaeological wonders and the rapid development of technology, there is an unbound potential for our future. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at recent discoveries. San Andreas Fault is ready for a major earthquake. There are several countries in the world that we know are particularly prone to severe earthquakes, including Japan, China, and Iran. A number of American states are also up there for experiencing bad earthquakes, and nearing the top of that list is California. In California, the 750-mile-long San Andreas Fault, the fault that makes up the tectonic boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate, Models have been produced to help to figure out the long-term slip rate of the San Andreas Fault, meaning the speed at which the two sides of the fault slip relative to one another. Following these observations, it has been estimated that the San Andreas Fault will have a major earthquake comparable to that it experienced in 1906, every 200 years. It takes time for an earthquake to build up a slip that will result in a 20-foot offset meaning that there is a small chance that this will happen within 30 years. To be precise, the Working Group on California Earthquake Probabilities said approximately a 2% chance. This does not mean the San Francisco Bay Area is immune from earthquakes. There is still a chance that significant earthquakes will happen, with predictions suggesting before 2032 a major earthquake will occur, though it simply will not be as large as the one in 1906 for another 100 years or so. The Pantelleria Vecchia Bank Monolith Whilst completing an entirely distinct investigation, a team of researchers stumbled across a monolith, a stone monument that reached a staggering 39 feet in height, an ancient artifact on the seafloor of the Mediterranean. Researchers were initially undertaking a high-resolution mapping of the seafloor, spanning the area surrounding Sicily, the Italian island in the Mediterranean Sea, when they came across this monolith. However, their research took a minor detour as divers went with recording equipment and cameras to conduct a closer observation. Sending divers down allowed a more accurate perception as to the location of this ancient monument, with divers journeying 131 feet underwater, finding the monolith in the Pantelleria Vecchia bank. The lead researcher of the project, Emmanuel Lodolo, who works with the National Institute of Oceanography and Experimental Geophysics in Italy, expressed the promising aspects of this research, stating we were very excited about this discovery. Some elements in the design of the monolith are indicative of man-made production, due to its regular, relatively uniform shape and three holes within it all with similar diameters. Far too neat, purposeful and intentional for a natural occurrence, leading many to conclude it has been man-made. Some have suggested the creators lived within the Mesolithic period approximately 10,000 years ago. The study produced by the research team expresses these sentiments, stating there are no reasonable known natural processes that may produce these elements, in reference to the consistency in the shape and size of the holes, alongside the structured regular shape. Another interesting feature of the monolith is one complete hole, with a diameter of 24 inches, that has penetrated the stone entirely. Current speculation is that it once held a torch of some description, meaning the monolith once served as a lighthouse, separating the sea and civilization. Again, these suggestions are all evaluated within the research, and whilst these ideas continue to be the current research hypothesis, this is largely speculation and theories at this stage in the research process we are yet to find definitive answers. Perhaps the most significant factor in confirming the man-made, manufactured nature of this ancient monument is that it does not match or correspond with the rocks surrounding it on the bottom of the ocean, dated to be approximately 10 million years old. Instead, the composition of the monolith more closely reflects those of rocks in the ridge of a more shallow marine area. Lodolo said that, This is one of the most important details in supporting the idea that the monolith is not made by nature or phenomena, but is man-made. So far, researchers have been able to date the stone to the late Pleistocene era, approximately 40,000 years ago. 
This process involved the removal of shell fragments from within the rock in order to conduct radiocarbon dating tests upon it. However, this only reflects the age of the stone used to form the monolith, and not the creation of the structure itself, which we are unable to put a precise year to, as of yet. According to the team of researchers, however, estimations may be able to be made based upon the variations in the sea levels, with sea levels having risen 410 feet between the estimated formation and the 21st century's present day. Other research opportunities have been presented from this discovery, reigniting many discussions surrounding the capability of ancient people to use technology that was thought to be rather advanced for their time period. Could hunter-gatherer societies form monoliths? So far, it is unclear. We know that advanced techniques could be necessary, including cutting, extraction, transportation, and installation. As we are able to gradually unravel more and more about this monolith, we bring with it a greater understanding of ancient societies, their practices, and achievements, making this discovery more significant than a simple stone monolith. Archaeologists will have to bury an Aztec tunnel in order to protect it. Of all anterior civilizations, the Aztecs are perhaps the most enigmatic and intriguing. The majority of the knowledge we possess of what their culture and lives were like comes from excavations and scriptures archaeologists have found in temples and classical Aztec towns. As such, it may seem odd for archaeologists to want to bury a tunnel that could lead to discoveries untold. Archaeologists from Mexico's Institute of Anthropology and History will be burying an ancient tunnel they found back in 2019 when they excavated Tenochtitlan, one of the Aztec Empire's most famous city-states. The tunnel in question is part of the Albaradon de Acatepec system and is a deeply intricate tunnel that was created and constantly altered and rebuilt by countless other civilizations that resided in the area before and after the Aztecs. For centuries, this tunnel was changed and made to reflect the culture living above it at the time. The archaeologists have a handful of reasons as to why they need to bury the tunnel, including, but not limited to, the fact the tunnel is part of Tenochtitlan's defensive system against flooding. This system is extremely complex and powerful and includes a myriad of tunnels, dams, canals and anti-flood protective measures. When the tunnel was first discovered in 2019, the Mexican government, travel agencies and archaeological institutes hoped to turn the site into an open exhibition for tourists to witness with their own eyes. This tunnel is truly a feat of human history, traces of both Aztec and Spanish historical designs, innovations and cultural influences exist in it. But the sinister side of archaeology includes dark archaeologists and marauders who might enter the tunnels illegally and take what is not theirs in order to sell them to museums or underground collectors. Burying the tunnel assures its safety from such individuals. The tunnel is stable but was critically harmed during the 1600s by an onslaught of floods that overwhelmed what is now Mexico City. These floods caused the Spaniards occupying the area to overhaul all the flood tunnels. The tunnel has various glyphs and sigils on its walls from different eras and cultures. Many of these are thought to be pre-Hispanic symbols that could bring more insight into Aztec culture. As of now, 11 such symbols were discovered. Among these were the images of raindrops, birds of prey, and what appears to be a military shield. These glyphs might have been embedded into these ancient walls by not only the Aztecs, but quite possibly by the autochthonous populations of nearby Mesoamerican cities of Chicanautla and Ecatepec, who were thought to have helped the Aztecs build the tunnel. Despite the tunnel's old age, its Spanish-based architecture is clear to see when it comes to the overall structure. At some point, the Spaniards left their own mark on the landmark. It is even possible that this tunnel was built during the very early colonial period of Mesoamerica, as evidenced by the Spanish-influenced arches and features alongside the traditional Aztec and Mesoamerican glyphs and flooding systems. The archaeologists involved promise to adhere to special masonry that is meant to protect the tunnel's cultural elements from harm during its burial, and that it would be buried in a way that would make re-excavation easier in the future.
Lost tourist says monkey saved him in the Amazon. The Bolivian Amazon encompasses long, deep rivers, dense canopied jungle, and mountainous terrain. It is not a place for the faint-hearted, to say the least. Fog often blankets the jungle, intertwining its way between the trees. Locals allege that the jungle can swallow you in seconds if you are not careful. Despite the dangers of the Amazon, it has proved a popular tourist destination, at least for those who enjoy an adventure. One of these people was a Chilean man named Maycol Coracio Acuna, who, it is fair to say, got more than he bargained for on his guided excursion. One day, rangers in the area received a call explaining that Maycol had, quite literally, vanished into thin air. Despite a few hazy reports of seeing him on the steps of his cabin around 8.30pm the previous evening, nobody had any idea where Maycol had gone. He had not left any obvious tracks behind, nor had he told any of the travelling party that he had intentions to leave. Initially, it was believed that the people on the excursion tour were playing some sort of sick prank, but the disappearance struck an unsettling chord for the rangers. Maycall's disappearance, even in its early stages, was similar to that of Israeli tourist Yossi Ginsberg, who became stranded in the Bolivian Amazon for three weeks. Rangers hoped that Maycall would not have to try to survive for that long. When rangers reached Maycall's camp, the tour guides explained that whilst he had not announced his intentions to go AWOL, Maycall had been acting rather strangely. He had refused to take part in a traditional ceremony called Pasha Mama, instead returning to his cabin. Upon the group's arrival back at the camp, Maycall was nowhere to be seen. Locals to the area then explained something unsettling. The people of the lowlands of Bolivia are very spiritual, and they believed that Maycall had been taken by a disgruntled spirit called Duende, for not participating in the Pasha Mama ritual. Whilst locals tried to summon Duende back with Maycall using a series of ritualistic practices, rangers searched for over a week for the Chilean. A key breakthrough was the discovery of a sock seemingly belonging to Maycool, which the locals then used to break into his soul and furthered their attempts to bring him back. After nine days, the search party saw something that they simply did not believe was possible. On the riverbank, Maycool was standing alive and well, sort of, with a stick in his hand. He had somehow survived nine days in the jungle all alone. But how? Maycall claimed that when he had got lost, he could not find the river. Instead, he followed a group of monkeys who guided him to water sources and dropped him fruit along the way. He was then suddenly overcome with an overwhelming desire to return back to the camp and somehow found his way there. Maycall, as far as we know, is alive and well. The locals believe that he could not have survived alone in the jungle, however, no matter the monkey's help. Perhaps there was some divine intervention after all. Ancient Hemlock Tree Floating in Crater Lake Legends are as old as humanity itself. One legend of Native American origin describes a battle between the gods, Lao and Skell that was believed to have occurred 7,700 years ago in Oregon. On Mount Mazama, Lao spit magma after being rejected by a chief's daughter. Skell fought back by blowing up the summit of the mountain, forcing Lao back underground where he belonged. Oregon's Crater Lake is fabled to have been formed in honour of Skell. The Crater Lake served as the location for strange happenings with people reporting ghost sightings for generations. There are stories of abandoned, ever-burning campfires, nighttime terrors and, most infamously, the old man of the lake. This is an ancient hemlock tree that floats in the watery crater and has done for over a century, always upright and stable despite its nomadic nature. In 1902, the crater lake was declared a national park. It was in this same year that geologist Joseph S. Diller reported his sighting of the hemlock tree six years prior near Wizard Island. The hemlock tree is bleached from the sun and is splintered. It floats four feet above the waterline, but the old man's body is sunken 30 feet below the depths. It appears rooted but is mobile, 
To onlookers, it seems the tree is supernatural, moving differently from our fundamental understanding of science. The tree's travel patterns are fascinating, and several people have attempted to track the old man's movements. In 1938, John Doer dedicated almost a quarter of the year observing it. Doer wrote of the tree's patterns. The old man travels extensively and, at times, surprisingly fast. So fast, in fact, that Doer managed to record the tree moving a shocking 62 miles in two months. It could travel at the speed of almost four miles per day. It didn't take long for the old man to become a mythical superstar. Local folk flocked to see it. The locals claimed that the old man controlled the weather, that the tree was a deity or nature spirit that protected the crater. In 1988, scientists attempted to get rid of the tree, believing it to be an eyesore and dangerous to tourists. But their attempts to remove it were combated by a sudden storm. The scientists, frightened by the phenomenon, left. Allegedly, the skies cleared immediately afterwards. Researchers believed a landslide brought the tree to the crater centuries prior and seabed rocks locked it in place. This theory stems from other trees at Spirit Lake by Mount St. Helens. However, the old man is free to move at will. It is not trapped in one place like those trees are. The old man, against all odds, remains balanced whilst avoiding natural erosion and sinking. It is said that the tree is perfectly balanced between light and dark, representing the fight between the gods. As for its depth, the old man stretches 1,943 feet, three times the length of the Eiffel Tower. When analysed, the tree was found to be 500 years old, but it could be older. David Grimes, a ranger, happily shows off the old man during his boat tours. When questioned about his own theory, Grimes stated his belief that the refreshing cold water in the lake keeps the wood rejuvenated. According to Grimes, the old man has character, a story, and history. And he, along with the other rangers, treasure the tree as a vital part of the park. The old man, to some, is a creepy sight with an even more alarming story. And yet some people, such as Grimes, find its presence calming. But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.